to another episode of the Downtown Podcast. We have made it to episode 13. I appreciate everybody coming out this week. Um, so first and foremost, we do want to thank our beer sponsor, which is FeeSeeker.com. So if anybody out there has a startup and they need to do credit card processing, FeeSeeker is your choice because what they do is they actually take a bulk referral method. So they work with a lot of different startups so they can negotiate a great price on their credit card and merchant processing. And then on top of that, they simplify things, which you know is good for us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, for your, for your startup too, you gotta do credit card processing. Absolutely. Yeah. Check out FeeSeeker.com. Best place to go if you need to get credit card processing. And thank you for the blue moon. Yeah. Jump into the news. Um, I want to start this week by talking about a book that was written by Phil Simon over here. Uh, this is his fifth book, and it is called Too Big to Ignore. I guess it'll be released around March 13th. If you could give us a rundown of how uh, it would help anybody in the community to read and some of the great tips that they could get from it. Sure. There's just a tremendous amount of information, Dylan, flying at us all the time. So this particular podcast will be on YouTube, right? Correct. That's data. People, I hope, wink are tweeting about it or putting a post, a post, something up on um, Instagram or someone's checking in through Foursquare, Foursquare. All of that is data. And as I found researching this, organizations are increasingly using this information to do absolutely amazing things. Unlike, say, technologies of the 1990s in which you needed millions of dollars to make this go, with the cloud, you don't really need that with open source software. So if you're a startup, you can be you know, five, 10 person company max and still leverage big data. Okay, so uh, when I was uh, reading up on some of the stuff you've talked about in the past, you sh something struck me when you talked about uh, what was called um, dynamic stability. Like you talk about a world where we have these big companies that um, change and they're unstable, but they're also stable at the same right. time. Could you break that down for Sure, us? that's actually an engineering term. So if you think about a plane, right, your plane is obviously moving in the air but you don't want it moving too much. So at the same time, it's almost a um, contradiction in terms, but it's stable and it's moving. In the last book, The Age of the Platform, I discussed Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google, and now those companies aren't sticking to their business models. They're not afraid to blow things up. They're not afraid if you're Google to spend $12 billion on Android because guess what, the world's going mobile. That doesn't mean that Google turns its uh, eye on search, but at the same time, they're tweaking their models. So how do you juggle those two things? I think it's a fascinating concept. Okay, and then what was the most interesting thing that you learned while writing this newest book? There is so much information out there, it's just scary. I think 15 of the 17 industries now have companies that have more information generated on a yearly basis in the Library of Congress. It's okay. insane how much information is out there. Yeah, and I hear about more things becoming information technology all the time, right? I mean, genetics is about to get into an information technology space. You name it. Yeah. I think that people are growing up embracing data, and there's just a tremendous amount of opportunity. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is from W. Edwards Deming, in God we trust, all others bring data. <laughs> okay. All right, and then where can people pick up your book? Ones, but it'll be on Amazon. It's a proper book, 260 pages. And if anyone wants to show up, um, on March 9th at 8 p.m. at the M, I'm going to have some people over there to just kick it off. Okay, yeah, well, we'll make sure to reach people out there, as long as you got beer, I think, though. <laughs> that's the trick, you I'm pretty know, sure that's how we do it, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I want to do is talk about um, an article that was in Forbes. It talked about Tony Shea and the whole project that's happening down here. But most importantly, there was a piece that I wanted to touch on, which is about uh, how new leaders are leading by example. So I asked Gabe and you to find a couple of people in the community that you thought should be highlighted, that may be overlooked, and that they um, lead by example, specifically. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that that's like the coolest thing about Vegas Tech is that all these leaders have emerged. Gabe's definitely one of them, and you know we'll find out more, you know, later on. But seriously, just people that just step up and make things happen. I think that's like the strength of what Vegas Tech is, and for people like watching that are, don't live here, they don't realize that. But we have uh, the Gosses who've been really involved with their, you know, not just their startup tracky, but they just do so much in giving back and supporting uh, well, that's everything. That's they do it for the right reasons. And exactly. That's, that's the thing about the community, right? Is people don't do it for self gratification. They don't do it for recognition. They do it. For for the right reasons. I actually do it for self <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, we, we, we do that. <laughs> yeah. Three no, four, I, no, yeah. no yeah. honestly, I think, I think it's people are doing it for the right reasons, and I think that's the foundation of our success, is that it's built in an idealistic and optimistic view of the world and what we can build here. I think a prime example, man, if you look at the Vegas tech community and what we're doing at South by in two weeks, man, 14 days from the day, you look at people like Don Kramer and, and George Moncrief and Brian Rosenfeld and Nate. These are yeah. guys, yeah. I mean, yeah. you don't know who these guys are. 
if you don't know who these guys are, let me give you a quick story. So we had, a, when we first threw out this idea, this crazy idea of going to South By as a community, everybody thought we were nuts, and we probably are, and I still think we are today. Um, but these are people that came to me five, six months ago, and like, hey, you, we're throwing out this idea of building this great app for Vegas Tech, so when we're at South By, we have this app that we can deploy on behalf of the community, and people can learn about the community from an app, and they can do all this check-in stuff, and it'll be built around South By. These are people in five or six months that have spent literally tons of time away from their family building an app that benefits the community as a whole. And not just for South By, that app has now evolved into an app that we can use for years to come in promoting the community. These are people, these are selfless people, man, and I swear that's the thing that's gonna make this community work, is people yeah. doing it for well, the right reasons. I wanted to highlight was uh, Chrissy Danger, because just it's right, like, yeah. as you see how hard it is to actually be that happy and that excited <laughs> I mean, you know it is, but yeah. then she pulls it together because she knows that it means so much in a broader context, you know? So yeah. it's people like that that take their like they take their moment of pain and they just deal with it. For but the, the thing is, we could literally spend an entire podcast and like a lot of the people in this room are I mean, the should. leaders. That yeah, I mean, we could do. Yeah, I mean, we should do like a give back day. We literally, it's an entire so podcast totally. of people in this community who just step up. Yeah, and, and they're not. It's not. And for exactly like you said, they're not like for their own profit. It's because they're for the good of the community, whatever they can do. So yeah, this 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 has changed the game. The, the things that we're doing here has changed this community forever. There's people doing things here now that never existed. I'm telling you, I've been here 10 years. I've never seen anything like it. People are committing to something bigger than themselves and they're buying it with their whole heart. And, and it's, it's amazing stuff to watch, man. I, I, I can't wait to look back on this 10 years from now. You know, for yeah, those of us in the crowd with kids, fun. for those of us in the crowd with kids, I'm telling you, things are changing for our kids and it's 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 going to be amazing. I mean, when Ethan's running too. the jellies. When Ethan, yeah. yeah, Ethan's going to be running the podcast. <laughs> yes, and, I know he is, right? Yeah, right. He's our beer sponsor next week. Oh, <laughs> I think we're doing, yeah, I think we're doing Apple. We have awesome. a 12 year old beer sponsor. Yeah, we're thinking about doing awesome. apple juice, so yeah. get ready, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but tell us about South By. So yeah. that's the last thing I want to touch on is, is you're you're leading by example, but where are we at? And uh, what can well, you I, well, let's clarify. I think uh, I, I threw out an idea. I think leading by example is the community, right? I think we've corralled around or we've coalesced around a bigger idea, which is um, we are we are bigger than the rest of the world knows. It's just a matter, you know, we're small in numbers. You know, Hugh Forrest, the, the director of Interactive, had a great quote, something to the effect of what they, what, you know, for what they make up or what they lack in size, they make up tenfold in energy and enthusiasm. And I think that's a true characteristic of what we do. You think of things like the Vegas Tech hashtag. That's our, that's our calling card, right? That's, we live and die by that hashtag. That's, I mean, that's what we are. That's our, that's why at South by Southwest, we didn't come up with some comprehensive, complex logo. Our logo is the hashtag. <laughs> that's right. Because that's us, right? right? Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's us. That's um, yeah, so okay. we're 14 days out, man, and uh, it's going to be epic. Everybody knows about the trade show. It's one of the largest trade show pieces in South by Floor. We've obviously got this cocktail hour. We have some exciting news to announce about that later. We have this party, which is one of the biggest parties at South by Southwest. We just got news today from Foursquare. They're hooking us up. There's going to be official Foursquare events. Uh, I mean, so things are turning, right, and things are falling into place. Um, and, and it's going to be crazy. Everybody's coming together. Everybody's contributing. We now have over 100 people who have volunteered on this project. Over 100 people. Jeez. That's yeah. 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 yeah, I love it. That, that, yeah. That's a big tech. Simon, are you going to be down at South Point? Do you have any plans to go down? Yes, now. <laughs> yeah. On the spot. I didn't, I didn't get scripted. Uh, no plans yet, but. Um, one day. Okay. And yeah. we're going to be doing some podcast shooting down there too. Yep. So we're, we, yeah, we're, we're talking about yeah, the podcast. Yeah. is hitting the road, so we'll be out. We haven't really figured that all out, but we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. do it. Yeah. We're, 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 we're doing, doing it. Yeah. It's a done deal. You know what, Dylan? I actually write for Huffington Post. After or during whatever you want, we'll do an interview. Okay. I yes. love it. Yeah, perfect. Dylan. Yes. Hey, and I just want to say, next week, everybody, keep an eye out. We have a really, really big announcement coming next week. I, you know, I, I know I say that every time, and I, I tell you it's going to be the last one, but we've really got another one. bigger, yeah. We've got 15 plus companies. We've got some of the best resources right here in Vegas, um, you know, between Switch and Downtown Project and Zappos and be behind everybody here in this crowd and everybody that hangs out in the Vegas tech community. Dude, we can do some serious shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a matter of us continuing to fight and continuing to put one foot in front of the other as a team. That's all it comes down to. All right. Well, that's going to end it for the news round table. Awesome. Let's get Zach up here so we can grill him. But thanks, you guys, for paying attention. Awesome. And uh, we'll nice. see you after the break. Awesome.
this is Zach Ware, one of the originals, is what we call you. Yeah, thanks. It's easier than looking up your real history. Am I you know? OG? Yeah. OG. All right, let's just dive right into a work in progress, okay? Because this is what's happening this week, yeah. and everybody's been checking it out. Everybody's saying good things about it. But tell us the details, the price, location, benefits. Sure. So it took us about two years to get work in progress open. Was that like a slow clap? Yeah, one clap. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a, a failed slow clap. Yeah. Um, uh, it used to work. <laughs> it took us uh, about to, uh, literally about two years to, to, to actually get a co-working space open in downtown Vegas. And it went through so many different iterations of ideas. And finally, we opened the first space on 6th Street. Um, we were starting out, we, we, as we were moving along, like trying to build this thing, we looked at all these different traditional models and we're just like, Basically, what we're trying to do as a community in downtown Vegas is inspire people to move around freely, to run into each other, and not get like clammed up in one place. So as we started to think about the membership model, we were like, you know what? We don't want to be traditional. We want to actually build a model that inspires people to move around. So we came up with this concept of a community membership at 50 bucks a month, and we decided that, that we needed to build more than one space. Um, so the first space at 6th Street, you can join for 50 bucks a month. Really what that gets you is access to what will be a ton of member events. We're actually building a really awesome mentor system that we're going to be uh, partnering with Vegas Tech Fund and some other folks to help build. So we have a kind of a system to help people connect with awesome entrepreneurs that can help them. Um, and then daytime access to the work to the community workspaces. So the first floor and the cafe are wide open all day. Uh, we have a space on Four Streets about to open. Um, Want a jewel a little open soon, and you would be able to touch all those for fifty bucks a month. Okay, and then so I know you believe in this kind of the same serendipity concept yeah. as uh, Tony does, but how did you try to structure these places so people would bump into each other? I mean, besides just getting a place to work. Yeah, um, I mean, I think. Everybody knows I work, obviously, at Zappos on campus development, and, and the, the number one thing we think about is how we can create environments that encourage people to move around. So we do dumb, weird things like at City Hall, we're not going to, you're only going to be able to come in through one or two doors versus the 19 that are in that complex right now. Okay. Uh, at Work in Progress, you know, where our, the community workspaces in the cafe are there to, to help create a, a comfy place for people just to chill out and relax. Um, frankly, you know, the workspaces, like a desk, sometimes you need to go heads down. So you, you yeah, really, right. while it is kind of open in public, you really do want to be able to go heads down. So we're pretty like, reasonable there. Um, but I think a lot of the, the fact that, that if you work in 6th Street on Monday, 4th Street on Tuesday, Jewel on Wednesday, User Level on Thursday, like creating a, an environment where we really encourage you to do that and make it super easy to do it, I think is what's going to really have an impact on, on the concept of collisions. And, and are you seeing your own personality in this building at all? I mean, I know you put a lot of heart and soul into it, but does it feel like your space that you yeah. want to work in? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, but yeah, yeah. does it feel like your personality too? Absolutely. Um, What's interesting is we, we I have a team of about 12 people that work on a few different things that I work on right now, and, and we moved to this like sandwich shop about a year ago, across, the old sandwich shop across from City Hall. We call it the sub shop. It smelled like bread. It kind of still does. Um, it's filthy. There are like 12 guys. It's, yeah. it's, it's terrible. Uh, we just actually had our, the first the first woman join our team this week. And, oh, and, and congrats. Yeah, no, yeah. It was, it was that great. So, yeah. and, and when we hired her, we were just like, you're in for a treat. Like, <laughs> where, this is really bad. We're really dirty. It smells you've never but, had. So yeah. our, our office now, like in, in the 6th Street workspace, is probably the crappiest office you've ever seen because we wanted our members to have the good furniture and the good oh, chair. Okay. So we've oh. got these kind of crappy old tables, and, and they're all dirty, and our chairs are broken. Um, but the space, you know, we're very much like a function over form. Group. We like. We really think that that places should actually support the work and the life that people want to have. And we aren't really big fans of like curved walls and water fountains right. and like all that stuff. So does it reflect my needs or personality? Yeah, it's not too bright. There's a lot of good coffee. There's <laughs> there's beer in the fridge. There's scotch in kind of a corner that's sort of hidden Plenty away. Plenty bright. Yeah. Plenty bright. Yeah. Plenty so windows. You know, it's that's that it feels good. Yeah. Okay. So the, the other cool thing about your history is that you've been here really from the beginning. So I get a unique opportunity to kind of take a bird's eye view of where this uh, community has come from. So I wanted to ask you about how much different it is now than you thought it would be a year ago. So as a community, wow, it, has it evolved the exact way you thought it would? Or hell no. Like, I mean, yeah, so tell me about this. So, so I mean, it, back in, gosh, 2010, um, Pavel, uh, Rick, Dylan, Ray, Jimmy, like a bunch of us got together and, and started doing things like jellies. And, and then Dylan and Shivana started this new, the first startup weekend. When we first started like thinking about the tech community, we all felt like, OK, we know that there's some Zappos people here. And, and all the guys in, in the front end team used to say, like, there's some meetups, like the JavaScript meetup. We pretty much hire everybody cool there to work at Zappos. So if, if there's anybody here, they already work at Zappos. We really didn't understand what was already here. 
So we, we really thought, based on, on the downtown project side and what we came to Vegas Tech Fund, we were going to have to like invest in companies and get everybody here. That's the only way we were going to make it work because there just wasn't anybody here besides Zappos employees. And we saw enough of each other, so we were like, we probably don't want to spend every day together. Um, what blew our minds, I think all of us, not just Tony and me and others, but blew everybody's mind was what, who was already here. I mean, you've got, you've got obviously the ALU crew. This is really early, the ALU crew. You've got people like Gabe that are like changing the world with, for Vegas Tech. You know, seriously, yeah. you know. And like, like the fact that this, like that we were already here and there were like hundreds of people that none of us knew that were just like us. We were like, holy shit, this is awesome. You. So, you know, I think what we're, what we're psyched about is, is how the community has just rapidly grown itself and all these different groups that kind of split off and are doing really, really cool things. And we were really worried, not just Tony and me, but like all of us, that we were gonna have to do everything to like right. kind of right. fake it till we made it. And that wasn't the case at all. And, and right. that's, I think, what's blown our yeah, minds. Yeah, I mean, Kevin Rose interview, Tony was saying, like, he thinks this community probably could survive even without Zappos moving down. What was, what was so like, crazy about it is I think this community could have formed without downtown, without Zappos. Like, I think it just was like, it was just literally, I think, the jelly and the startup weekend. Like, the, the, once we all had a reason to get together and, and the magic started happening, it really had nothing to do with downtown and the tech community. It had nothing to do with Zappos. It just... It was just like somebody had cause together, somebody created a, a place to do it, and we just did it. And we were kind of like, shit, well, we knew this like five years ago. <laughs> right, you know, right, like, right. What, like, why did it take us so long to, to get this done? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's a pretty interesting. Yeah, that's great. Um, so I wanted to, same question we have for these guys. Like, I wanted you to identify somebody you thought that uh, maybe has been overlooked in the downtown project in the sense that they've been leading by example, but don't always get all that cred. So like, who would come to your mind first? Well, so somebody stole Chrissy. Um, I think that for what people don't maybe not, maybe know this, maybe don't know this, but we've had nearly fifteen hundred people come visit downtown Vegas in the last yeah. um, in the last year and a half. Um, there's a team of people that that spend every minute of their day trying to make that experience amazing. Like you've a lot of people here have heard from people like Angel, people like mm -hmm. Greg, um, people like Chrissy, and their whole job is to is to create an opportunity for people from outside yeah. to get Those here. Those are all the first people I met. Yeah, yeah exactly. like to, to get here and and really have an amazing time downtown. Because what the truth of the matter is, we all know how amazing this neighborhood is, but when. We, when somebody emails us or we email back, we've got these, some of you might have received an email like this, like a, kind of an awkward email where we're like, come downtown and work remotely for a few days. And someone's like, well, what am I gonna do all day? And we're like, trust me, like it's gonna be amazing. When we, when we first started, we programmed every itinerary. We, we yeah. made these itineraries, it was like minute by minute. And then we screwed up a couple times and we'd like drop the ball on like Friday afternoon. Somebody would get here and, and Tony would be like, why don't they have an itinerary? And we're like, I didn't know they were coming. I don't know what the, but what ended up happening was those people who we didn't massively program yeah. ended up walking away with friends here and coming back and doing amazing yes. things. And so we were like, oh, obviously we're the problem. Let's stop, let's stop micromanaging. <laughs> yeah. But people like Angel and Chrissy are the ones that try to create those environments. And, and I, I think people forget like how important that is. Right. That we sort of trick people into coming to Vegas for a few days and they, they get inspired. And in some cases, like you, end up moving here and doing awesome things, you know? Yeah, I'm lucky. I mean, we were like, you know, the crash pad, like we didn't think we were Get into a place with running water. You yeah, know? I mean, that was good. It was really good. Okay, so a couple more questions. We'll we only have a couple more minutes here. But uh, so tell me about what's the if you had to start over as an entrepreneur, like what market do you think is right for disruption? I was thinking about this question earlier today. I. I I mean, it's probably based on where I am right now. I hate HR. Oh, okay. I think that um, everything related to running accounting and HR for a startup is just crap. Yeah. Like, like, where do you get benefits? How do you do new, like, new hire paperwork? Every single person that gives you advice has an ulterior motive. They want to sell you a service, and you're like, oh, it looks really good. Then you find out, like, a year later, you're being screwed. Right. I think that I, I'm probably my team is probably out of compliance on 100 HR laws right now. Like I, I, I assume we must. And I have no right. way. I, I learned every, everything I know about HR. I learned from about.com. Right. Like, right. Or like and it's like how how in the world can you run a company that way? Like I think that's like when I hire a new employee. Like if I had to just drop everything and start over, I would tackle that problem right now. I'd be like, you hire a new employee. Like click, put their email address in, and then like the system just takes care of everything. Right? Yeah. I think that's an area that 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 needs some disruption. Um, I, I just I'm, that's of course because I'm in the middle of it right now. Right. Well, that's good. I mean, that's what I like to hear. So, and then tell me, uh, you tease us a little bit at the uh, downtown lowdown about uh, possibly having helicopters and Teslas. Um, <laughs> any more info you can expose about um, that project? What I what I said at the the at the we won't have any secrets. Um, what I said at the lowdown was was 
was pretty much everything. Um, we we are actively working on buying 100 Teslas. Um, <laughs> you can say it again. I mean, I don't think people. Uh, yeah. Get so basically, our goal is to is to yeah. eliminate the need for you ever to have to, to own and in a lot of cases drive a car. And it came about like a year or two. We've been working on these little things like bike sharing, car sharing, and so forth. And one day we were just like, wow, why don't we just put it all together right. and and make make it basically say like, where, where are you? Where do you want to go? And, and we've got a, a series of options that help help make it happen. So we've like literally actively talking to Tesla. Um, we we're actually awesome. going out to their factory in, in, in a couple weeks. Um, that actually randomly came about. We came up with this idea on a Tuesday. <laughs> the Teslas weren't a part of it. And on Thursday, Tony was speaking at a conference in LA and ran into Elon Musk, yeah, sent me an email with the subject line 100 Teslas and says, Why don't we just do 100 Teslas? And I was like, well, Yeah, I, mean, I can think of 100 reasons. <laughs> but, but it actually, I think it's going to be really cool. And choppers, who knows? You know, yeah, I, I, well, I tease it a little bit, but you know, it's the first time I've ever lived with that car. So yeah. I think that uh, it's incredible the city can sustain so much so close. But yeah, that one little tweak at the end would just make all the difference for uh, yeah, totally a lot agree. of people. So, okay, uh, I think that's it. Last question is, I saw a while ago you had skydiving on your bucket list. Is yeah. that still there or it's, did you solve that one? I, it's marked out. I did it. Oh, you did? I did it okay. twice. Um, oh, wow. Ironically, I did Trying it both. addicted to the adrenaline, huh? Well, well basically, I, I got duped into it both times. And, um, and I was, frankly, I was hung over both times. And so I, I, it was, it was only on Sunday morning. Like you can't do that on a Sunday morning. That's a really bad idea. Um, so I got tricked into it and then had bad judgment, but I had a blast. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're alive to talk I, about I had it, a blast. So. so yeah, it's done. All right. Well, thank Great you thanks. for talking to us. We really appreciate it and everything you've done for the community. So thanks. Thanks. She hopefully will be back next week, but in the meantime, there's a ton of events coming up, so let's get to it. First up, First Fridays on March 1st. Visit their website, www.firstfridayslasvegas.com. Come out, get involved, and support your local artists in the growing downtown community. They're young, established artists. They're going to be displaying and selling their work. There'll be food trucks galore, a ton of live music for all your tastes, special art installations, and live performance paintings. So it's a community coming together to celebrate art and culture in Las Vegas. Also, they need volunteers. So if you guys want to get involved, whatever your talents may be, whatever it is you may do, there is a place for you. So go ahead and log on to www.firstfridayslasvegas.com to get involved. Next up, when I say scale the strat, what would that mean to you? Yes, scale the stratosphere on March 2nd. The iconic Stratosphere Tower in Las Vegas, Nevada, you can scale it, you can take steps to help end lung disease. If you participate in this event, you can scale all 108 floors, 1,455 steps inside the Stratosphere, the highest building, the west of the Mississippi River. All the money from this event is going towards the American Lung Association in Nevada, whose mission is to prevent lung disease and promote lung health. To learn more about this event, Log on to www.scalethestrat.com. Up next, we all love a hackathon, don't we? Yeah! March 2nd at the University of Nevada, there will be the hackathon, the Reno Hack. It's a 24-hour app development contest using Microsoft technology, presented by Edon and PC Doctor, hosted by Microsoft Licensing. There are a ton of awesome prizes, including Surface, Xbox, games, and most importantly, cash prizes for the best app. Um, there'll be on-site Microsoft developer experts in to assist contestants with Microsoft technology and how to be successful in the Windows marketplace. So register on the Hackathon site, which is www www.renohackathon.com. Our next event is Collab Spring Lecture Series and Exhibit on March 6th. Go ahead and visit their website to learn more at www.collablv.org and that's C-O-L-A-B-L-V.org. Collab is pleased to announce this very exciting lineup of speakers for their 2013 Spring Lecture Series and Exhibit launching on March, March 6th, and guess what, you guys? The series is free and open to the public, so that's awesome, make sure you go out. Last but not least, we all love the Children's Museum, right? Yes! Yeah. On March 9th, the Discovery Children's Museum is having a grand, grand opening, is open to the public, 
You can either attend or you can volunteer. If you guys want to volunteer, they need people to assist with like door clickers, crowd control, they have a giveaway station. Um, <clears throat> volunteers will need to wear special clothing to be identified by, so if you guys are interested in volunteering for the Discovery Grand Opening for the Kids Center, you can contact info at discoverykidslv.org. More info on the museum if you guys are interested in attending. The museum is realizing a year-long relocation plan. The new museum is set to open, as we know, on the 9th. The Discovery Center is adjacent to the Smith Center in Symphony Park. It's much more than just the relocation of the current museum. The new museum helps redefine Las Vegas as a city that values culture and arts and urban lifestyle, and most importantly, valuing its children. That is it for the events today. See you next time. Okay. All right, we had to keep the tradition alive with having you guys on the podcast. But <laughs> this time, I heard you come in just bearing gifts. Yes. Yeah. Um, so at the Sin Shop, we made Ooh, you guys a... Ooh, a downtown a podcast. Time. Nice. All right, so tell me the story. Who made it? Who put the, who put the sweat equity in? We both did. Um, yeah. So it was really just... Um, Very cool. I think after the last podcast, what was the last one, last two two podcasts ago, um, I was probably drunk on wine, and I said something like, I'm going to make you guys a sign, yeah. <laughs> and I, I suckered her for helping me, and so we just showed up at the sin shop, and, um, like shoot, made another drunk promise, and, and, yeah, exactly, um, but I keep my drunk promises, good, and, uh, you do, and I yeah. really appreciate that, <laughs> sure, yeah. um, thank you, and so um, we showed up, and just, uh, you know, designed this thing up in Illustrator, mm -hmm. laser cuttered it, and Spend some time. So it's, there's actually electronics inside. So let's see if yeah, it's more easy. Check out the right city right shop. Here oh. we go. Yeah, yeah, so, so it lights up. There's LEDs. Um, a good example yeah. of what people can make at the city shop. So exactly. I, I really appreciate you doing that, and we're gonna keep it here. Yeah. Okay. Hug it out. We got gotcha. you. Oh. Very All cute, right. guys. Very <laughs> All right. That's it for episode 13. Thank you, guys. Bye. Woo!